Hello, and welcome back to America's Forum here on Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Sticking around with us, thank you so much for doing so. Congressman Marsha Blackburn, a member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, so good to have you back with us. It's good to be with you. Thank you. All right, we were talking about the Fisker, Auto Fisker Automotive Sale and some of these green energy initiatives and companies that have received federal funding. Uh, back in 2009, former Energy Secretary Stephen Chu had promised American taxpayers that a loan topping $528 million would create over 5,000 jobs. And here we are, Congressman, uh, this, this sale of Fisker possibly going to the Chinese. Um, how would you classify the uh, administration's green energy initiative at this point? Well, their green energy initiative is a failed attempt at the federal government being a venture capital firm. I mean, when you look at the fact that they were out here saying, oh, you know, you've got Fisker, you've got this, that, and the other, we're going to create all of these jobs, it has not come through. And they have spent a lot of taxpayer money on these projects, and they just have not panned out. They have not worked. And we're very concerned right now that they are taking something that was one of their marquee items, which was investing in all these green energy products. They were going to be the VC firm. And now what we are seeing is the jobs didn't materialize, the return to the taxpayer didn't materialize, and what they are doing is selling it to Wanshan, selling it to a Chinese company, and the American taxpayer is still on the hook for this. And that's absolutely They're right, the Congressman. Ones that are gonna lose we saw some of the backlash that, that came after the Solyndra bankruptcy, and I'm sure even more people today would be just furious to know that American taxpayer dollars are, you know, via bankruptcy and a failed company like Fisker are somehow going to Chinese uh, investors and uh, folks who stand to make money off yeah. that over there overseas. Uh, Congressman, we'll have to let you take a step away for a second. We've got to move on to the next portion of our, our show here, but we do want to thank you very much for being with us. It's always good to be with you. Thanks for having me on. All right, hopefully bye we'll bye. have more time to talk next time uh, you come back on the show with us, and we look forward to that as well. All right, moving on now to our next story. We're going to take a closer look at some of our soldiers and service members who, of course, were willing to die in service for their countries. They're often poorly prepared, experts say, to leave or to live the American dream, rather, after they return home from the battlefields. After 18 years of military service and more than a decade in war zones, uh, some folks like Sergeant Randolph Byrd will become a civilian in just two days. He says the Army prepared him uh, for that life with this pamphlets and sit pamphlets on the desk and have a uh, meeting for three or four days and you're off on your way. Now to address the often overlooked issues or actually I should say experts including former President George W. Bush gathered at the George Bush Institute yesterday uh, to focus on the challenges facing post 9-11 veterans and their families. They are the 1% of right. America who kept the 99% safe. And we owe them and their families a deep debt of gratitude. Our country can never really fully repay our vets, but we ought to try. We have to try. Part of repaying our veterans, George W. Bush says, is reframing PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which has been mislabeled, he says, as a disorder, According to the former president, Bush says just calling it post-traumatic stress would go a long way in easing a stigma affecting many military veterans and their families. Experts say that there are many additional issues soldiers transitioning to civilian life face, including learning new job skills, money management, and turning off the military mindset. Ken Watterson is president of the Veterans Resource Center in Dallas. They get out of the military, they don't have a job reference, and they can't compete in today's job market. And within six or nine months, they end up homeless. Now, since its opening last fall, Watterson says the Veterans Resource Center in Dallas uh, that he has helped start it has helped over 6,000 veterans get a solid footing in civilian life. But, of course, challenges remain. Joining us now to tackle some of these tough issues is General Peter Pace, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General, it's good to have you with us here. Great to be with you, John, and your America's Forum. And it's an honor to talk to you, sir. You are on the front lines of all this here. What is the biggest issue you see uh, from veterans after they re return home from war zones? Well, listen, what we have is terrific patriots. Uh, you know, sometimes they're painted as heroes. Sometimes they're painted as victims or charity cases. Truth is that the vast majority are just great patriots 
who have served their nation, they're proud to have served their nation, they now want to transition back into uh, the mainstream of American life, get jobs, raise families and the like. And, uh, you know, from the standpoint of the American um, industry, they, they are a national resource. And I think the biggest problem we have is on one side of a wall, so to speak, you have these great young Americans, men and women, who are looking for work. And on the other side of the wall, you have uh, industry. There's something like 3 million vacant jobs in the United States right now. And we need a way to connect the folks who want to hire with the folks who want to be hired. Yeah, of course, anybody who knows a veteran um, and civilians like myself, it's, it, it sometimes give you chills because they will call you sir. Um, just on the street, if you, you say hello to them, it's, it's really quite inspiring. And those are the types of folks, it, it's maddening that we can't find jobs for them when they return home from these battlefields. Now, we heard President Bush say yesterday that one aspect of this uh, is, is changing the way that we look PTSD, not looking at it at a, as a disorder. What do, you, what do you think about the President's comments? I, I think he's spot on. It, it, is, it is not a disorder. It is, in fact, a, 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 a battle wound in every respect uh, that you, you can uh, paint it. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, as, and as important as that issue is, that's, that's a very small minority of, of the folks we have coming out. We have patriots who are decision makers, who are dedicated, who have a moral compass, who understand courage, not only on the battlefield, but how to stand up and, and, and talk about what's right and do what's right. They're men and women of integrity. They're, they're great team builders. This is a national resource. And if, if industry is selfish about it, They'll want to hire these young men and women because it will give them the global competitive edge that our nation needs. And what are some of the excuses that we're hearing uh, from prospective employers? I don't know if, we, if we're hearing any at all. Uh, why these folks might not be, be hired? Because we've heard anecdotal stories about people who are mechanics and tanks or planes over in Afghanistan or Iraq, and they come home and they can't find a job working on diesel engines or things of that nature. Yeah, I think one of the things that really will come out of the uh, initiative that President Bush has uh, going on in Dallas and that we did earlier this week is the opportunity to help educate American industry about okay. the kinds of... General, we've got to take a quick commercial break. We'd love to talk to you more about this issue because it is so important. If you could stick around, that would be great. Uh, right, right now, we're going to sure. go ahead and toss it to commercial, break, uh, to commercial break, and we'll be right back with more here on America's Forum right after this.